Doom's multiplayer is just what you would have expected after playing through its insanely fun campaign. Once again, it was frantic, fast-paced, old-school shooting, where players would be leaping and blasting their way across the nine small maps, so think Halo, only in the bowels of hell. Double jumping above an enemy to then rain down a well-placed rocket, zigzagging in and out of fire to get close enough to unleash a super shotgun round straight to the face. Seeing the little enemy poking his head out from around the corner just so that you can pop it at the last second with your zoomed in vortex rifle, all of this is what made Doom so special. Game modes included your traditional types like Team Deathmatch and Domination, but also included were a few more interesting additions to the usual roster. Warpath was all about fighting over one zone, however this zone was constantly moving along a track, making the fight a lot more mobile as the battle would never stay in the same place for too long. Defending them was more precarious, as you guarded the zone like a convoy, but knew that it was slowly moving towards the enemy and into a dangerous trap. Freeze Tag worked a lot like a normal elimination mode, where each player only got one life. However, in this case, rather than dying, a player got frozen solid. They could then be thawed back to life by an ally and carry on the fight, but when a whole team was frozen, the round was lost. These are just a few examples of the different game modes available. In every match, however, just when things seemed to be settling down, a curveball would be thrown in the form of a hellish satanic beast. At a random point on the map, a demonic rune would appear, allowing the first player to reach it to transform into one of four Hellspawn creations. These monsters were powerful game changers, almost guaranteeing a few extra kills to whichever team was lucky enough to pick it up first. No matter how many times it may have backfired, there was always that urge to go in for that David vs Goliath kill and slay the evil for yourself. Sometimes it paid off gloriously, but usually it didn't. When a demon was finally slain, the runestone would be dropped, allowing a new beast to be created. The process would then continue until the runestone eventually wore off and the match would get back to the normal human v human bloodbath. Each character model could be customised, adding a personal touch to the game. Suits of armour were made up of a pick and mix of various other armour sets, which could then be coloured, detailed and even have damage and dirt thrown on them to make a player's warrior look worn and unique. And the same could also be done with the guns. Loadouts were made up of two weapons and a tool, and yes, you could equip a rocket launcher as your primary weapon, if that's what you wanted to do. After all, this is Doom we're talking about here. Success in a match would lead to a whole host of medals and progress towards challenges, but here was the problem. The reward for all of these challenges was simply extra XP. Leveling up was initially good because it unlocked new weapons and allowed access to all four of the demons, but pretty quickly, a player's level simply became a number. At least the game did have a level system, <coughs> Uncharted 4, but leveling up alone, along with the odd bit of a new armour piece, wasn't really enough incentive to keep on playing. Once a gun was unlocked, that was it. No improvements to be made, no mods or attachments to upgrade, not like in the single player campaign. There were no perks or uniqueness to players other than the simply cosmetic. The closest the game got to perks were with the hack modules, which were one-off boosts that could be applied on spawning and usually added a special ability that lasted for a minute or two. So the longevity of the online community may not have survived long with its multiplayer alone, but thankfully Doom had another trick up its sleeve. It was called Snap Map. This was essentially the Mario Maker of the FPS genre. It allowed players across the globe to have a go at creating their very own maps, right down to an extreme amount of detail. Creativity shone, as maps started emerging that were of such a high standard that it could be said that Doom now has an infinite supply of new levels. And as well as the basic multiplayer maps and new single player levels, there are also a range of crazy new ideas emerging from this excellent creation mode like a Doom-style tower defence game, complete with waves, a shop, viable defences. There was a music maker mode, complete with drum sets and a piano. A Pokemon-style battle arena, where you had to pit the armies of hell against each other in order to see who would win. Evil, fat, ugly abomination from the depths of the underworld, I choose you. So, who knows what a bit of imagination will lead to next. But one thing is for sure, while the campaign in Doom may have been the highlight, this was a game that had a lot, lot more to offer. Thanks for watching, and remember, build like hell. And for more video game reviews, be sure to check out A's Gaming Moments.